Welcome to the fourth tutorial in this Blender tutorial series. We're going to get to some fun stuff today, which, all right. This time, we're going to be learning some fundamental tools for making 3D models, as we've been doing. But after this tutorial, you will be able to create a wide variety of simple but recognizable objects in Blender, which I think is a really cool thing. So let's get started. First of all, let's remove our beautiful skateboard ramp because it's easier to learn these techniques on the default cube. To do that, with the object selected, press delete on your keyboard, like so. Be sure that you're in object mode, which you can re-enter from edit mode by pressing tab, or else you will delete whatever combination of vertices, edges, and faces you have selected in edit mode, and not the actual cube itself. Even if I delete every face, the cube is still visible in the outliner. So this is a problem. The entity still exists and we don't want it to. So you have to delete it in object mode. And yeah, we'll say goodbye to our beautiful skateboard ramp. To add in a new default cube, either go up to the top of the 3D viewport where it says add on uh, meshes and click cube, or press shift and A, mesh it, and then cube. It's worth mentioning that if you add a new object while in edit mode, the two objects will be listed as one object. So like um, in this scenario, if I go into edit mode and I add a cube um, and say I move this one, these two cubes are listed under just the cube entity here in the outliner, and they are just one cube. In certain situations, this can lead to Z fighting, say I were to delete the cube, uh, add another cube. If, if it, we move this cube even just a little bit, there's gonna be Z fighting. I think in game engines, there will also be Z fighting, even if we don't move it just a little bit. So it should be avoided. And it also just kind of makes modeling confusing. It makes moving objects confusing because you don't know which chunks of geometry are associated with which entity in the outliner. So it should just be avoided. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to delete this and just spawn in a new cube. Uh, the first thing we're going to try with our cube is rotating. By pressing R, you're going to enter what I'm going to call free rotation mode. And I call it free rotation mode because just like free grab mode, which you would do by pressing G. I know we were just calling it the move tool earlier, but I think that calling it the grab tool makes it easier to remember that you activate it with G. But yeah, so just like just pressing G puts you in free grab mode, pressing just R puts you in free rotate mode. Similarly, you can lock the axis of rotation to just one axis by pressing X, you know, Y or Z. And you can lock rotation to two axes by pressing shift and whatever letter corresponds to the axis you don't want to rotate. Again, just like grab mode. So shift Z rotates every axis except the Z. Shift X, everyone except the X. You can also just like in grab mode, put in an exact number value to rotate an object. Typically, I find myself most often rotating an object either positive or negative 90 or 180 degrees on the Z axis, which spins the model around from the top. So let me just show you what that would look like. I just type in 90, boom. We're not gonna see much change because uh, it is a cube. Let's say we did Z 45. You're gonna now see, I just press seven to go to the top view on my number pad. You could also use this menu here and go right here, the tilde menu. Oop, sorry. Where it says top. And yeah, now it has rotated a clean uh, 45 degrees on the Z axis. So we're just kind of spinning it when you think about spinning something around in the traditional sense, as in how you might rotate a cup on a table in real life. It's very important not to rotate to odd angles you won't remember, as models that are rotated at odd angles are harder to align with other objects. Try some rotations just to make sure you've got a feel for things and how each axis results in a different rotation. A Z is going to be your most common, 100%. And in my experience, the other axes are more rare. Uh, you'll notice that if I rotate on the X axis, it's almost if, if it's spinning around the red line. And if I rotate around the Y axis, it's almost as if it's spinning like, like a rotisserie chicken or something along the green line. So just some easier ways to help you remember. Remember that a rotation can be canceled before it is applied, which is done with left clicking by right clicking. So if I'm rotating like this and this is crazy and I don't want to end up with something like this, I can right click as I'm still in the rotation mode. Uh, if it's already applied like this, if we've already left click, just do control Z. Or if you've really bungled things and you don't see any way back, which isn't the case right now, but we can also just delete the cube and add a new one since we're not that far in. Also worth noting is that uh, Blender only lets you undo a certain number of times, uh, which is something you definitely should be aware of. Each individual action, like moving a point along an axis, counts as one step 
for which Blender can undo. By default, the number of steps that Blender will undo is 32. You can change this number by navigating to the preferences window right here under edit preferences, going down to the system and under memory and limits, cranking this either up or down, depending on how powerful your computer is. More undo steps will take more processing power and less will conserve processing power. All right, getting back to our regularly scheduled programming, Let's talk about the scaling tool. The scaling tool allows us to resize entire objects in object mode or the three main elements of objects if you're in edit mode. If we press S, we enter scaling mode. Uh, scaling mode, just like rotating mode and grabbing mode, uh, patent pending, do not steal, has the exact same controls. Uh, go ahead and try it if you don't believe me. Um, again, we're in free scaling mode. If we just press S, we can lock to our axes. We can negate one axis from our scaling and we can scale by exact values. So you can just input a number uh, and you can right click to cancel your scale if you're still in scaling mode. One thing I'll point out is that although you can resize an entire object in both object and edit mode, uh, it's best to do so in object mode. We'll talk about the reasons for this later, but it's good to get into the habit early on. Another thing is that negative scaling should be avoided entirely as it will mess with the appearance of our shape in game engines. We can see whether scaling is positive or negative by checking the numbers in the top left corner as we're scaling. So you'll see if you look at the top left, all our numbers are positive. What we want to avoid is scaling and work like this. And then all of a sudden you can see the numbers turn negative. And again, we can undo this while we're still in scaling mode by right clicking. Or if it's already been applied, we can press Control Z. So now we can move our geometry in all directions with the grab tool, like so. Just pressing G, going to free grab. We can rotate it in all directions with the rotate tool, just like this, free rotation. And we can scale it in all directions by pressing S for free scale. And we have keyboard shortcuts for each of those, which makes us a very efficient worker. It allows us to be super, super speedy. All good things, right? I suggest you try harnessing your newfound powers uh, to th throw that shape around to your heart's content. Plus, it's also just good practice. Now that we've got a million different ways to change pre-existing geometry, how can we actually add on new geometry? Well, we've already talked about adding shapes with Shift and A, or by using the Add menu at the top of the 3D viewport right here, add mesh. But if we do so in edit mode, we can create headaches for ourselves. And if we do so in object mode, we'll end up with two different objects, which it's actually very useful. But what if we just wanted to make our cube into something more exciting without adding in any new objects? Uh, the extrude tool can definitely help us do just that. Real quick, let's just delete whatever cube we were working with by pressing the delete key in object mode with the cube selected, just in case you made any modifications. Uh, we want to be back with the default cube, so I'm going to use Shift and A, spawn in our cube here. Now, in edit mode, if we press E with some part of the shape selected, uh, for now, let's just select this top face. We will begin extruding our selection. So let me just show you what that looks like. Um, it's as if we are creating a whole new set of faces where the old boundary used to be. By default, we will be extruding along the normal axis, which is basically the line that exists if we were to draw a line at a right angle from our face of extrusion. And this blue line actually does a great job of representing that. Because our face is flat on the ground right here, 90 degrees is just straight up. So it is as if we were extruding along the z-axis. Just like the other modes though, if we were to want to extrude on the z-axis and for some reason we weren't, you can just press z until it says at the top along global z. Pressing it twice, allows us to enter free rotate if we were already locking on the z-axis. The same exclusion shortcuts also apply. So shift x to extrude on every axis except the x-axis. I'm just going to go with z. And I'm going to extrude it by one unit. So to enter a specific number, again, just press 1. And then you can left click or hit enter. I'm going to hit enter. And there we have it. A brand new geometry on our pre-existing cube. The cube is no longer cube shaped. And we have this extra edge loop in the middle to play with. In case you need a refresher, edge loops are a group of edges that connect to each other and span the outside of our shape. And we can select this entire loop quickly while in edge mode by holding down Alt and left clicking on one of the edges in the edge loop. From here, I implore you to see the effect of the tools that we've examined on this edge loop and notice how it affects the entire shape. Try to see if anything you can create with our tools begins to resemble something you can envision, like a kitchen object or tree branch. It's important to remember that all art begins as something formless and then grows into its shape over time. If you master these tools, then you have the skills necessary to begin sculpting that formless idea into something basic and yet solid, which will eventually become something wonderful. Also take note of which transformations and axes of transformation lead to the potential issues that we've talked about earlier. 
such as stretch faces and Z fighting. Again, be sure to avoid negative scaling. So I'm just gonna do that right now. So what can we do? We can scale, this looks good, right? This could be like the base of a torch, you know, or the basis for a doorknob. We scale in the negative, it, we, not only do we have, uh, do negative scaling, but which is bad, but we also end up with uh, Z fighting, right? We can scale outwards, and now we've kind of got something like a vase or like a trash can. Looks pretty good, I'm gonna undo that just for the sake of things to try out more tools. We're gonna rotate, um, whoa, and see it kind of <laughs> distorts itself and goes back as we rotate. Um, and so we can choose an axis, an axis as well. You can really mess this up. Let's say we wanted to keep it pretty uh, calm. We could do so as well. Just be aware that the probability of creating a stretch face increases more as we apply these strange rotations. Uh, this is most certainly a stretch face. So we're going to undo that. Uh, we can also grab, just kind of grab, we could grab all on the X, make kind of like an arrow here, grab Z, and then we could also, you know, make it a little more proportional. It's a cool shape. So yeah, things just kind of taking shape here. New geometry, again, also remember that I can focus on this by either pressing the period key on the number pad, or going to the tilde key, which is above the tab button, and hovering my mouse over view selected and pressing it. I'm just going to undo all of that for demonstration purposes. Say that we want to move this edge loop around and we want to make sure that we're not going over the boundaries of our shape. You could do that by just pressing G and then locking the Z, uh, but you'll notice that I can potentially bring that too far um, and uh, create Z fighting at the top and the bottom here. So just to avoid that whole mess, we are going to uh, edge slide. So to edge slide, double tap G, and at the top it will say edge slide mode and now you can move it around to your heart's content and it will never go past the boundaries and yeah we can move it to somewhere more in the middle we'll talk about how to get it to be right in the middle but for now this is just how you would slide it in a way that is safe and doesn't risk accidentally messing up your geometry uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the extrude tool uh, but we will be taking a deeper dive in the next tutorial for now, think about how rad it is that we've potentially made our cube eligible to ride some of the roller coasters at the amusement park, and that you now know how to, with just a few clicks of your keyboard and mouse, make this cube taller than any building on Earth. 500 kilometers in the sky. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably the tallest building on Earth. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching, and take care.